to access backend databases. So um, a lot of these vulnerabilities are really specific to the custom code that your customer has, your customer has. and the only way to really protect against zero-day attacks and unknown vulnerabilities is to harden the access to the URL using that parameter and making sure that only allowed characters are being used. If you're not, if, if your web application firewall uh, is, uh, is not allowing specific characters, those are those characters that can be used with a SQL injection or cross-site scripting attacks, and by blocking those, you're actually protecting yourself from um, zero-day attacks. So that's why it's so important, this feature. FortiWeb does that um, uh, very well and provides reports uh, and, and uh, presents uh, exactly what it learned, and you can then create a profile, uh, a security profile based on that, and any access to the to the application that's not according to that pro profile will be, uh, FortiWeb can alert and obviously uh, can, can block. So it, un it models the application based on usage patterns, it understands real behavior, and most importantly, as the application changes, FortiWeb continues to update it, its profile and allowing you to then uh, generate new rules. Uh, so as the application changes, it's, as the lifetime and the life cycle of the application moves forward, FortiWeb moves forward with it. Vulnerability scanning, uh, FortiWeb hooks and integrates with the biggest brands out there for vulnerability uh, scanning, but it also has uh, a basic um, vulnerability scanner within the product as, uh, as well. This is not meant to be um, uh, a solution that competes with IBM AppScan, HP WebInspect, White Hat, and so on. It's not meant to replace them, but for some customers that have one application, a small application, if it's a small shop, they don't want to invest too much in, in, uh, in these um, uh, vulnerability assessment solutions, they can use 40 web and we don't charge an additional license for this um, and it's a good solution for some of these small customers. Moving on to the features that we have released this year, um, one of the things is, as I mentioned before is tighten the integration between uh, 40 web and other products, other 40 net products because it helps us to upsell to existing 40 gate customers. So if a 40 gate customer wants, uh, needs a WAF, it will obviously be a lot easier for him to buy uh, 40 web if he knows that he gets additional value out of it because of this integration. So we've added two integration points uh, this year. The first one is what we call the 40 gate WAF integration. What this does is using the WCCP protocol, it allows customers to define very granularly rules on the 40 gate or which type of traffic to forward to 40 web for scanning. So, for example, a customer can say, all right, um, I just want to see how this 40 web uh, solution um, uh, works. Why don't now I just create uh, these types of, um, uh, this type of traffic only for this application. I'm going to forward the traffic to 40 web to see how that works out. So, uh, granular traffic forwarding policies, whether it's specific clients, whether it's specific servers, uh, regardless, you can define that on FortiGate and then remove the rule if you want to change anything. Um, the, the advantage here, obviously, is that you don't need to change your routing, the DNS, you do everything on uh, your FortiGate. And it's really more of um, the way I see it, it's a way for customers to test out FortiWeb to see if it works with their applications, um, and then they can move out everything to FortiWeb when they're okay with it. The other integration, uh, a very interesting one, that we're the only one that provide this type of integration, um, is uh, quarantine IPs. The way this works is that FortiWeb would hook into, um, in, into FortiGate and pull the quarantine IP list, list from FortiGate. And any access from that, from the quarantine IPs to uh, application through FortiWeb will be immediately blocked. And what is the use case here? Now, FortiWeb really protects against attacks from the outside, usually, right? Attacks against hackers, uh, attacks coming from hackers, and so on, coming from the internet. But one of the biggest threats is advanced persistent threats. These are uh, uh, hackers and attackers that are being a that are able to somehow um, take over a client in your organization, and um, once taken over 
uh, using tro Trojan horse, whatever type of, uh, uh, of attack, they can then start jumping around from that client that is, in that is inside the LAN into different applications because at the end of the day, they're after the sensitive information in application. So if um, you have a client that has been flagged as quarantined in, on your 40 gate, um, obviously you do not want to allow that client access to your application. So 40 web would immediately block access from clients helping to address the advanced persistent threat um, um, use case. Um, the quarantine IPs is really defined by every customer can define it differently. It could be because that client has been flagged as being um, communicating with a command and control center, uh, whether it's going to, uh, whether it's it's been shown to have a virus on it, uh, whether it's um, violating the company uh, uh, guideline, it doesn't matter. But if you're really pointing it on, on your firewall, you really don't want to allow access to the application from it as well. So that's really the use case. Uh, again, it's a, both of these uh, integration points are big advantages for your existing customers and a, another, another important reason for your customers to buy a 40 web uh, instead of a company. The next integration is 40 Sandbox. Uh, as we've launched 40 Sandbox and obviously integrated that with 40 Gate, we moved on to integrate it with 40 Mail, and now comes the 40 Web integration. Um, everybody knows about Sandbox technology. Uh, 40 Web integrates here for advanced uh, threat protection. So uh, one of the use cases for 40 Web is to scan file uploads that users are uploading to um, to their applications. It, it doesn't need to be malicious. A lot of applications allow that type of functionality. For example, an application that allows uploading resumes. Uh, 40 Web already has a way to filter only uh, specific file types and also uh, has a, an integrated antivirus that it can scan those. With the 40 Sandbox integration, it can also forward those files to 40 Sandbox um, for additional uh, verification. 40 Web will send it over to 40 Sandbox. Uh, because 40 Web is a real-time solution, it will let the original file go, uh, but if 40, if 40 Sandbox uh, returns back that this file is malicious, 40 Web will obviously alert the user that a, a malicious file has been uploaded, but also keep a hash of that file when uh, a user tries to upload that same file again, it will be blocked uh, immediately. Uh, for this, don't need an additional license uh, for the 40 Sandbox integration. As long as you have a 40 Sandbox, uh, then, then you can integrate 40 Web with it. And another thing that's coming out later in the year is uh, integration with 40 Sandbox Cloud. So what that allows you is if, 40, if you don't have an on-prem 40 Sandbox, you can still use this functionality and send these files to the cloud for additional scanning. A very important feature we uh, released about um, a month ago is 40 Web Threat Scoring. This is one of a kind, first ever user scoring uh, system on a WAF. And what it does, it triggers event um, based on thresholds. So if you look at the, for the ones of you who have more experience with, uh, with WAFs, uh, the way this really works is that you have um, a specific request to your application, 40 Web or any other WAF will intercept it and make a decision whether it's um, malicious or not, and then make a decision whether to block or just avoid. So usually, um, the, a WAF makes a decision based on one specific request. Uh, this could create an issue with false positives. It also creates an issue with um, not being able to track the user throughout the live session and also only make a decision based on one event. What we've done here with threat scoring is we have defined a specific threat score to every uh, violation, uh, every signature violation. And what happens is only when a specific threshold is being reached, 40 Web will then um, uh, run the action, block, alert, and so on. And what does that give you? It really, first of all, minimizes false positives. A lot of times, uh, false positive is a big issue, and I have a slide on that as well. But you want to make sure that you're blocking someone not because of false positive, but because it was malicious. So by um, making a decision based on multiple events or only when a threshold is reached, you're able to make a more accurate decision. And some of these attacks, and some of these, for example, signatures have a, a, a 
high threshold, and which means that they're going to be immediately 